Hello, my beautiful movie people. Thank you so much for clicking on another episode of Side Flick. My name is Chris. Let's dive into some of the news topics we're going to discuss here today. Some of the things we're going to be talking about here is the update going on with the Alien franchise, both the show and movie. We have our very first leaked set footage and set photos of Godzilla vs. Kong 2, even the official working title with the logo that gets us really pumped. And also because it's the shocking news of the week, more updates concerning Warner Brothers and Discovery and other things they've been canceling. That along with so much more, some you movie fans to give me your opinions down below with everything we discuss here today and just a quick few things here off the top here be on the lookout later today on my channel because i'll be able to release my review for prey that's the predator prequel that's coming out on hulu this friday got a lot of stuff i'm gonna say there but before we continue on with that guys i want to go ahead and thank the sponsor of today's video and that is harritos i can't tell you guys how devastated i was when i walked downstairs the other day after making some videos for you guys and i realized i was all out of harritos thankfully if you use the link in my description you'll be able to find your local market that has some harritos in store stock i went right away stocked it up in my fridge with all 12 of the flavors you get in their variety pack it's the summer beverage to keep you quenched with real cane sugar none of that high fructose corn syrup and by supporting haritos you'll also be supporting my channel and that means the world thank you again to haritos for sponsoring today's video all right with that now out of the way let's go ahead and dive into our first movie news story we got here some major updates concerning the live action alien tv series that'll be coming to fx slash hulu i know there's probably a lot of people out there that completely forgot this was a thing and that disney and announced like two years ago but deadline here has reported that noah hawley has delivered all the scripts for the series based on the sigourney weaver feature film and shooting will begin next year details on the series goes as the series will be the first alien story set on earth and will blend the horror of the original 1979 movie and the action of the 1986 james cameron directed sequel aliens ridley scott will produce the series via scott free banner continuing the alien series will take place before weaver's ripley character appears and she will not be part of the show as well as none of the characters apart from the alien itself let me tell you right there i was not really looking forward to this show i actually for a second thought they wouldn't include a xenomorph in this thing but now hearing all that Oh, I'm in. One of the main things that people were really sad about when they heard, you know, Disney now owns the rights to the Alien franchise and they were going to be making a new show and movie that was all going basically straight to Hulu, they felt pretty sad about it and it felt like Disney was just kind of brushing aside their franchise. They also really wanted Ridley Scott to finish his new Alien trilogy he started off here. And while it still looks like we're not getting the definitive ending to that trilogy, there's got to be some comfort in the Ridley Scott fans knowing Ridley Scott is on board as producer with this thing, so he's a proven a little bit of the story or at least getting paychecks for having his name on there but with them actually confirming oh we're gonna see a xenomorph it's gonna be set on earth brand new characters oh i'm on board for this this could be a lot of fun even with the way they described it the scares of the original but the action of the james cameron sequel who wouldn't be pumped for that? But if you're someone who's not looking forward to an Alien series, they still have the Hulu reboot that was announced earlier this year that'll be directed by Fed Alvarez. And me having seen the movie Prey and knowing what they did now for the Predator franchise, I'm actually really pumped to see what they do now with Alien going straight to streaming. What do you guys think of these updates concerning the Alien franchise? Moving on here, talking about some Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, we just continue to get some leaks about the upcoming animated Spider-Man movie. Last week, we talked about how we found out about a new Spider-Man variant being included in the movie, Spider-Punk. That was thanks to some toys hitting the shelves early, and well, same situation has happened here, because now we know Cyborg Spider-Man, or actually, as it's now known, Cyborg Spider-Woman has joined Spider-Man Across the Spider-Man. Here is the design of the toy that is popping up in stores right now. It does look very different from what the original Cyborg Spider-Man was looking like. I think they should have gone with that original design, but it's been proven time and time again. Sometimes it's not about the design or what happens, but the context of the movie, so I'm willing to give it a shot. And other than Cyborg Spider-Man just looking cool, there's really not much to his backstory other than the fact that this was a version of Spider-Man that got really beaten in battle and then a scientist saved his life by turning him into a cyborg. It's a character that's barely popped up in comic or animated history that it's probably one they're going to change the origin for in the movie because if anything it looks like a mechanized spider-man suit that someone is inside of instead of it actually being a spider-man machine hybrid all in one still super duper pump and sony you just need to release some of the first looks at the upcoming new team members i don't want to have to figure out all the spider-man variants through toys what do you guys think about cyborg spider woman joining the ranks moving on here talking about some good old hairy cheeks coming back to clap them godzilla cheeks you heard me right i can't believe it's actually officially happening guys there was a part of me in my mind that i like 
like, yeah, sure, they're making a Godzilla vs. Kong sequel, but like, are they actually making one? And oh my god, they're actually doing it. We not only have here our first look at the working title and kind of the logo they're going to go for with this Godzilla vs. Kong sequel, and it's going by Origins. This is kind of a name that if you've been following my channel, you've already heard us talk about. Many fans, including myself, have been speculating to what exactly Origins means in correlation with Godzilla vs. Kong 2. A lot of people think it'll finally be the backstory of how the ancestors of Godzilla and King Kong got together to fight and we get to see how the axe was originally built that we saw in the first Godzilla vs. Kong. We don't really know yet, but let me tell you, I'm also loving the colors attached here. Looks like we got some purple and blue going on. The last Godzilla vs. Kong movie was all about orange and blue, so it's kind of nice to see that they've upgraded the look a little bit. But that now also brings us to some set footage that we've gotten from them actually filming the movie over in Australia. Thanks to a new station in Australia, we got our first looks at the footage and possible hint to what's going down in this movie and it's kind of exciting. For one, it looks like the beaches of Australia are not going to be Australia in the movie, but instead are being turned into the beaches of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. We have here ton of Portuguese signs, Brazil flags everywhere, even Brazilian police cars on site. Really some great movie magic, but even more exciting is when you hear what the director is making these people do on set. Let me play it for you. What's going on? So one, I think this does help us get an idea of what's going down in this movie, and it doesn't look to be the ancestral Godzilla vs. Kong movie we thought. It very much looks like it's taking place in modern day, or at least a decade or two ago. But still, man, we gotta get happy, because for the longest time, we thought this was still a solo King Kong movie. But since then, the official Toho Godzilla website has said that Godzilla will be in this movie. You even have crew members on set talking about this being a Godzilla and King Kong movie. It's told a, a secret, top secret. It's uh, something to do with uh, a gorilla and a uh, dinosaur so it's like they're doing this rematch film and that's just exciting man i know there's people who were not big fans of the last movie and i'm like it was fine when it came to the monster fights the dedicated screen time to kong himself the big end battle like it was all so entertaining and fun to me i'm looking forward to this and i like adam wingard for this i just hope they maybe give him a better story still i think it's just exciting that they're actually filming this thing because like i said i knew it was coming i knew it was happening but i didn't think it was actually happening and now they're filming it here and this thing will be ready for us in 2024 let me know your guys' thoughts and theories on the godzilla vs kong set footage all right now moving back talking about some warner brothers and discovery because man is everything on fire and a huge mess and people are starting to doubt now that discovery was the savior we needed. So in case you didn't check out my video yesterday when I talked about it, it came out that Warner Brothers and Discovery have come together to cancel the release of Batgirl. This is a movie they spent $90 million on, was still in post-production, just needed some visual effects shots done and it could be released to the public, but instead they decided, no, we're gonna shelve this thing and not release it anywhere. And while we'll talk about some more updates on why exactly that happened, another movie that was canceled that also devastated me I didn't get to talk about is the upcoming animated Scoob prequel. Now some of you might not have known this, but I talked about it once or twice here on the channel. They were making a Scoob prequel movie where it was going to follow the kids of the Scoob movie basically solving crimes and doing a traditional Scooby-Doo like story that I was really looking forward to. It was going to be called Scoob Holiday Haunt. It was going to be released straight to HBO Max and I'll be honest with you guys, I did not like the first Scoob movie. I was severely disappointed with that film and I did not want to see another ounce of Scoob in my life. But then I heard about this prequel the premise and what was going on and it's like i'm still a scooby-doo fan at heart that's why i was so disappointed with the last movie and this sounded like traditional good fun loving scooby-doo i wanted to see this thing and now it's crazy we'll never lay our eyes on it the creative team behind the movie came out and said like it was nearly finished like it was just so close to being done and it was going to release this year now nothing. That's like the whole heartbreaking side of all these announcements. It's like there's people who spent hours, took times out of their families and days to make this product and there's a-holes who want to comment. Yeah, but they got paid, didn't they? They got that money, didn't they? They got that bag, 3C! Okay, yeah, they got paid, but still, you're working hard on this 
to show it to the people. You put your blood, sweat, tears, and passion on the project, that paycheck just makes you feel dirty you did all that for nothing. So that was just something that sucked to hear about, but since the announcement came, and even after I posted my video talking about the cancellation of Batgirl, we've gotten more updates on exactly why it happened. There was a lot of rumors going around that it was just because Batgirl was just that crap of a movie, that no one wanted to see it, that they were so embarrassed by it that they were willing to bury it. When that isn't the case at all, we learned here from Deadline exactly the reason and they were able to cancel these two movies and justify losing millions and millions of dollars. There was much speculation on why Batgirl was canceled, having to do with it being a bad movie. Sources said that the film tested once and the result wasn't that bad, considering the cut had temporary visual effects which tend to temper the audience enthusiasm in the scores. So the real reason these movies were scrapped was because in both cases, these filmmakers were told that it came down to a purchase accounting maneuver available to Warner Discovery because the company has changed changed hands and has also changed strategy from the previous regime. Essentially coming down to Discovery and Warner Brothers was able to pull this off through a legal loophole of them merging together and being able to write it off for tax purposes. When the studio looked at movies like Scoob and Batgirl and realized they would still have to spend more money to finish the visual effects, more money to market the movie, make trailers, posters, and all that so people know, hey, come to HBO Max to watch this, it just would have been a lot more millions of dollars that they really wouldn't have seen money come back on because it's all subscriber-based stuff instead of box office revenue like going to theaters. And even if it went to theaters, it was not looking good that it was gonna make that much money. So it was honestly more profitable for them just to write it off in their taxes than to release it. This also means since it's a tax write down, they can legally never profit from showing this movie. In other words, we probably will never see this thing or if we do, it's going to be through a leaked version that some employee has, puts it on YouTube and then it just circulates the internet forever. That is like the only scenario now we see Scoob and Batgirl. This leads me into my next little topic here about a rumor circulating with HBO Max that the streaming service itself might not be a thing anymore. Now again, take that with a grain of salt, but Thursday, Warner Brothers is having this sort of quarterly meeting where they talk about their earnings and reports. It's nothing that's meant to go to the public, but they're going to make some announcements about the future of their company. Nothing like a DC fandom or San Diego Comic-Con situation, like it's all business talk, but it's said on Thursday, they'll make the announcement that they're canceling HBO Max, that they're just gonna go back to HBO, that a lot of the shows that they made for HBO Max are now gonna be canceled along with Batgirl and Scoob, and any show they decide to keep Will just become an HBO show instead of an HBO Max show and that they're going to focus on Discovery Plus over HBO Max and I'm like that kind of sucks man HBO Max is actually a really great streaming service I'm currently watching Nathan Fielder's The Rehearsal which is hilarious and you should too and that new Pretty Little Liar show that don't judge me, it's actually not half bad. They got some good stuff on there, man. It kind of sucks that this is happening. But last thing I'll say here is this legal loophole of them being able to write off these movies for tax purposes is something they're only allowed to do until the middle of August, and then after that, they can't really do it. So really, by Thursday, we should know what other things are being canceled. And it's kind of already going around that Blue Beetle is safe, along with Ezra Miller's The Flash. Shockingly, those things seem to still want to be released by Warner Brothers and fall under the category of their big event movies. They're still like, just so much more we could talk about like I could do an hour just sitting down talking about how crazy this is we're not even talking about like the repercussions that this has for the people wanting to work with Warner Brothers they lost Christopher Nolan and he's over at Universal now what actor director or anyone involved is gonna want to make a movie with Warner Brothers when they can just cancel their hard work for tax reasons. Still, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of all these updates concerning the Warner Brothers Discovery and HBO Max situation? But that is all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of the day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button. Stay tuned on the channel later for that Prey review. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.